Hello there everyone and welcome back to TNO, the last days of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Herman Lover, but we're going to talk about our friend in the Congo. Uh, Herman read over the paper three times. He knew that he ought to be pleased with the report, but he caught himself wondering if it was all that could be done. Herman would have appreciated something uh, he could point at in the meantime. Uh, to prove that Hutig had not been permitted to carve out his little domain without resistance from Germania. He supposed he could endure the utter humiliation of it for a few months more if that meant that the empire Hutig had stolen was raised entirely to the ground, of course. His thoughts gathered. Herman listened to Galen speak. A group of men loyal to Germania, led by particular Herr von Hassel, will work to subvert Hutig at every moment. Galen did not smile, but the, uh, the Goring imagined he was very satisfied with his own work. Eventually, he'll make a move against the government. Either we will have Africa in our hands once more, or the resulting chaos will lead to a total collapse of Hutig's regime in the area. Herman was keen enough to pick up the implication that it would likely be the latter of the two possibilities. Let him keep the ruins of his crap hole if he's so darn attached to it. The Big Daddy declared, though he was not so happy about the potential loss as he attempted to seem. Uh, You've done well, Herr Galen. He waved his hand, silently dismissing the Avar man as if he were a trained hound. He had much to think about. The dogs of war pick Africa dry, and the strength of the Cabal increased by 15%. For the good old German economy, we've got the, the uh, Herman youth. Uh, we've got pride in Herman, and nationalized banks. Also, well, there was a comment from the first episode saying, um, Why do I always keep calling the F word a big daddy? Just because I do it so that YouTube doesn't pick it up within at least the first two minutes, so I don't get completely demonetized and get another strike on my channel. You know, go figure. Uh, the return of Africa Jaeger. Uh, Herman, watched as a jet black helicopter came in low and loud as it approached the landing pad built for the VIP visitors of the Rex Kanzlei. It was not one of those marvelous and expensive machines that the Luftwaffe had been toying with, nor was it even as sleek as any of the private crafts the corporate bigwigs were so fond of. No, it was an older but also far more durable model that had been built for use in the African Rex Commissars. No, it was a personal vehicle of Secret Miller. The cra craft's landing was not graceful by any stretch, but bumping twice and skidding half flip. Herman uh, fleetingly wondered if the pilot was drunk. He hoped the former RK was unharmed. Still, he reminded himself that the man could survive the South African war and run from the OFM for the past several months. A little jostling wouldn't be the end of him. He was brought up from his thoughts by the sound of 330 Puma's cockpit door opening. From the pilot's seat hopped a man in the dress of a common mercenary. A term gave 45 slung over one shoulder was Secret Miller himself. Only moments before the Big Daddy had been annoyed by the mediocre landing, but that was all forgotten now. Herman gave a non-formal salute that Mueller did not even bother returning, but Goring didn't seem to mind at all. Yeah, Mueller, it's good to finally see you in person again. I had no idea that you taught yourself to fly helicopters during your time in Africa. It was most impressive to watch you in the sky, if I may say. Mueller flashed a smile that had won him adoring fans all across the Reich. Why, thank you, uh, Herman. Yes, I did pick up some skills in my town, but mostly for the purpose of getting to hunting spots, you see. But I'm thrilled to have impressed the great Alex Marshall himself. Hunting, yes, well, I did know you were quite an exceptional marksman. We ought to hunt together at Schofheid. You may come to Karen Hall and stay a while to rest, won't you? If it's you asking me, then I'll be delighted, sir. Marvelous, and we can discuss your future with me then. Oh, he joins us. Fantastic. So, as we're preparing the army, we read the New Age of Science in the last episode, so if you'd like to read about this one again, please go ahead. But we definitely have to read about War Plan O. Denmark, Austin, Netherlands, Bohemia, Poland, and Slovakia. Every journey begins with the first step, and the path to restore the Reich's glory lies in securing its immediate and rightful sphere in Central Europe. These operations. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. It completely changed everything. Uh, have been given the name War Plan O. Resistance is expected to be futile and minuscule. Auf Wiedersehen, mein Afrika. Was another mandatory meeting uh, of the War Cabinet. Wish to Ger Gerhard Bakon met trouble, and yet, even as he had the thought while following General Steinhoff into the conference room, he cannot help but notice that Fjord Goring seemed surprisingly placid. Good spirited, even. Something was certainly up, although the Luftwaffe staff officer couldn't begin to fathom what would cause a furrier, the furrier to appear such. And it had been a few months since the last meeting when he had been red with rage, his eyes burning with venom for the trade of Hans Hutig and the loss of Africa. As one when Gerhard moved in close to see the map halfway between the Führer and the Field Marshal Shona, that he understood what was going on. It was a battle map plan, with lines crossing every which way but all ending in bloody arrows stabbing into the heart of the continent. Gerhard suppressed a gasp. This was impossible. Insanity. He wished he had possessed his superior's dark sunglasses to hide the doubt in his eyes, but with any luck he would be just ignored, as usual, as long as he kept silent. Steinhoff, unfortunately, had no such luxury. The air chief meandered over to his leader with an usual like, rasp questioned, My fear. Do my eyes deceive me, or is that a plan of attack against the so-called Reichstadt sitting on the table? I was under the impression that we had decided against any such effort. He spoke to the Führer, but Gerhard could only just make out the shadows of his l lidless eyes turn towards the OKW chief. 
That's just seeing Steiner of Goring almost bellowed exuberant after discussing the matter with Shona. I decided to put any attempts at recl reclamation on hold for now. In return, the General Field Marshal has so considerably drawn up these plans for me, aren't they, Graham? Gerhard attempted to feign disinterest, but he had the uncomfortable feeling that Remar could sense the deception from across the table. He shivered as he turned his gaze back from the butcher's protege into his superior. Yes, uh, yeah, I agree, my Monsieur. These plans are quite exceptional. This can't be good for anyone's blood pressure. We support political power. Decrease the influence of the militaries by a small amount because we are on a timeline now. Commence War Plan Zero. If not completed, decrease the loyalty of the militarists. Add the militarist demand influencer, which decreases the, uh, loyalty with a small amount. Failing to meet their expectations will increase the loyalty loss. And when we do it, add the militarist demand influencer, decreases loyalty with a small amount. So we are getting there, my friends. It is February 1966, and we'll see where this roller coaster will take us as our economy is collapsing on itself. But we have a yearly surplus. So as much as I would love to do this, and uh, attempt to actually get even more money to lower our debt to GDP ratio. Probably not gonna right now. Ah, new age of science. Finish off the SS. The remains of the SS will be hunted down with extreme prejudice. I love it. Increase more loyalty. Ooh, a new age of science. We're gonna need that political power for later, but let's commence War Plan Zero. Um, focus your change. Drum heads. High treason. More stability, but there's a little manpower. Loot the castles. Ooh. Strip them of their honor. Well, we gotta get through all of this eventually anyways, so... Well, let's finish off the SS. Beginning as a mere personal guard of the Fuhrer, the SS has developed into a malevolent tumor that Germany can no longer tolerate. These previous comrades in arms have been reduced to pathetic lackeys for Himmler. So the time is coming to bring an end to this poisonous organization which has done us so much harm. But the forces in a strong position will bring the SS to its end in a swift and dramatic manner. Thousands of SS men across the Reich shall be shot or imprisoned on the Fuhrer's orders, snuffing out the black sun so Germany can finally see the light. Ah, beautiful. Bitter, bigger, better Panzer. The Volkswissenschaft. Yes. Ah. War Plan Zero. Well, we got that completed, so that's okay. We have a year to get all this stuff done, so... And this is pretty early on, so we can finish off the SS first. Now that the Fuhrer has ousted the insidious pretenders inside Germany, we may look outwards once more. We promise war to the German people, war to make the Reich powerful and prosperous once more, war to bring us back to the glory days of the forwards when the Swastika flew over Moscow for the first time and the Bolshevik hordes fled over the Urals with the tails between their legs. The militaries agreed upon the first war plan, a strike at the weak nations surrounding Germany, those who once fell to the boots of the Reich, who jumped over one another to serve their true master, fragile governments, clinging to the threads of legitimacy to try and avoid the hammer of true military power. They'll make a perfect first target, and the taste of rapid victory will tantalize all those who have ever had doubts in the Fuhrer. The war shall once again know the fire and fear of the Wehrmacht. Let the German war drum beat once more, let all its enemies quake in fear for today Germany is strong, and tomorrow Germany shall be triumphant. As, of course, we still have uh, all this stuff going on over here. Um, we could do all that stuff. Actually, we're looking pretty decent right now. They have what? They are 60% stable. There's no war going on right now. Um, how much would it cost to help us out? 50 political power is quite a bit for more stability. And I know we're probably going to need to save our stability, or political power for now, at the very least. Um, you're mostly infantry. You're special infantry. And your tanks. Well, I don't like... Hmm. Because he's the only general that has 5 out of 5. I don't want to split these guys up. Just hang out down here with them. So be it. Good. You'll be fine. Alright. We got some guns done. Ships, corvettes, frigates, destroyers. Cruisers. We're going to start working on cruisers and whatnot. All ahead of time for this one. Not bad. So after this, ooh, what do we have here? Is there one more here that we can do? Doesn't really look like it. Ah. I guess we could do all this one as well. Add another land for it, which I kind of want to do. It's only 25 political power. Screw it. We're going to do it. And then what? Looked up, break the Danes back, fall Augustus, Poland, Stalecker, Slovakia. That's Operation Sieschelschnitt. 
The Netherlands, in their foolishness, mistook the Reich's internal squabbling for a moment of weakness. They have broken free from our embrace, and it falls upon us to bring them back into the fold. Like a sickle shall cut through their lowlands, their lack of natural barriers only helped us last time, and even though their vaunted waterline did not stop us, why should it now? This will be as easy as cutting the head off of a tulip. The purple scare, Goring smile, spread wide over his face. He looked down upon the crowd that chanted his name. There were no longer any bombers to worry about, nor fighters that would strafe buildings, nor tank shells, bullets, or whatever else enemy forces could muster. Instead, there was a strange sensation of peace, broken by strong and fast by the entrance of a new fear. Looking over the disheveled and lost people, Goring knew they needed something to, to hate, and he would give it to them. Sons and daughters of the greater Germanic Reich, he began, sweeping in arms across and catching the interest of all present. Now that this war is concluded, we may return to peace, as brief and fleeting of ascent as it may be, however. Not one of you shall be fooled into thinking that this piece is nothing more than an excuse for the enemies of the Reich to gather in secrecy and organize resistance against us. The illegitimate errors of Adolf Hitler have been cast into a shadow, but another insidious organization remains. Slamming his hands under the podium in front of him, he leaned forward and felt a rush of excitement flow through, and he let, part, let, he let lips part for a grim. The black seat of Europe, the rogue breakaway of Burgundy, is nothing more than an immortal enemy in all of its constituents, including the Schutzstaffel, or traitors, enemies, and bloodthirsty dogs howling towards insanity. A spark of awe amongst the crowd that spread rapidly in a sense of brewing hatred. Goring led them like a shepherd. As of today, all former members of the SS shall be questioned, all who serve shall be trialed, and all elements of the SS shall be destroyed, burned, and shattered. Heil to the new Germany. Heil, heil. Inflation's really high. Growth is terrible. Um, how do we lower inflation? We could print more money, probably. That would save our, serve our problems. We could spend more on social stuff and admin stuff, but we're honestly probably not going to do that. Plan zero. Ah, things are falling apart down there. Operation Fruling. In the dead heat of the Gato Damerung, Reich's protector Slovakia has bit the hand that fed them. The bastardly ethnic Slavs and the protector have overthrown the lower aspects of our duly appointed government. Forced to face the products of their own failings at Germanization, the loyalist elements of the government have shown themselves to be cowards and fled. If you want something done right, it seems you must do it yourself. Ah, one completed. You get stability. I love it. We're going to give some more time. I do want to read about uh, New Age of Science. Even in the year before the Civil War, the German nation was the most advanced repository of modern science and technology in human history. It had conquered the stars and put a man on the moon before them. It had conquered the atom and unleashed its fury on the Americans to the end of the Second World War. The two great leaps in human knowledge in the last century have at last come to the hands of the German people, and the whole world knows it, and yet, despite it all, the last races continue to vie for the crown, and the unfortunate truth is, they have begun to get so too fa get far too close for comfort, and that ends now. The Goring will not allow the Reich to ever be surpassed in any way, and to this end, he's prepared a campaign on intellectual revitalization on all fronts, from agriculture to armored weaponry. The reclamation begins. The headquarters of the Oberkommando, David Macht, are abuzz with activity in the central meeting room. All branches of the mighty armed forces of the resurgent Reich are represented around the table, where the once proud nation starts to reclaim its destiny. Where the Bucket Creek over, and the first and foremost task is to reclaim the closest lands to the proper Reich, the greater in the Ger greater Germany. More than a matter of pride, regions such as Bohemia and the Netherlands are home to important industrial hubs that approve fundamental and future expansion plans. Dozens of generals and admirals surround a large rectangular table, though whose head is currently occupied by two men in high uniform. The Führer, Hermann Göring, and his right-hand man, Feldmarschall Ferdinand Schorner, look intently at the maps spread in front of them, though only one of them actually understands what they mean. Despite his experience as ace pilot, Hermann Göring has never been a general, and rather than maps, he prefers paintings, which he deems a much better use of canvas. Gentlemen, begins a Feldmarschall, rousing the crowd from their ruminations. The Reich stands still, but empire has fallen apart without the resources and manpower provided by the former Reich's commissariat. Our war machines will never be able to recover in full. If we want to reclaim a right as Aryan masters of the world, then we need to strike now. The Führer applauds his small speech, immediately followed by the rest of the Oba uh, commando. It should be immediately evident to all of you uh, how our most immediate targets should be, the, uh, should be these, he says, pointing his fingers at several highlighted nations, Denmark, Holland, Bohemia, Oslo, Poland, and Slovakia. These nations were most closely integrated with the Reich and are still reeling from the chaos of the rebellion. Some of them might yet be saved, but most will fight. If so, gentlemen, we'll give them what they want. Uh, We'll give them what we want for Germany, he finishes, and everyone cheers with him for Germany. You're leader of tanks. Anything here? Nope. Okay. And we're pretty much good to go, so uh, y'all get over here. And y'all get ready to bomb the hell out of everybody. West African War, we don't concern ourselves with that part of Africa. Alright. Starving off the inevitable, integrate the Netherlands, loot the Netherlands. 
But taking this decision, there's a 35% chance that we'll be unable to integrate the Dutch. Oh, Operation Fruitland. Our very first subject nation, the Slovak state, has followed the Reich through thick and thin these past decades. However, it seems that in the wake of Joseph Tiso's death, the Slovaks have forgotten who their greatest patron is. No matter, we shall give them all the reminder they can need. Not all is lost. According to Supreme Intelligence Services, there are surviving loyalist forces in the Reich's protectorate that seek to restore order and stability. All it takes to rally them is a show of force near the border, and these loyal men will flock to our side in earnest to reclaim their homeland. Slovakia will be ours once again. Final ultimatum. Despite our repeated attempts at coaxing, threatening, and pleading with Slovakia to rejoin the Reich, the breakaway says stubbornly refuses negotiations. This cannot be allowed to persist lest we show weakness. The fear is that full attention has been brought up to bear on the disloyalty or disloyal Reich's protectorate. I'm sure they refuse his direct order to submit, they will very well know the consequences. So Martin brought to Slava. While the bravery is commendable, the Slovak state refuse all diplomatic attempts at a peaceful unification. Further goring will not tolerate this insolence. The troops will be mobilized, re supplies requisitioned, and targets marked. If Slovakia will not follow the example of a loyal protector, then Slovakia will become one. Our lowland cousins have gone mad. Sure, they must have, for that can only be the explanation of such treachery. We've given them so much since we took them under our wing, safety, security, prosperity, and even promised them eventual integration into the Glorious Reich. It was not enough for them, it seems that, or perhaps they were led astray by the Judeo-Bolsheviks that still fester in the dark. We shall shine a light that will burn them out with its intensity. With its intensity, the final ultimatum. The Dutch government, as they know, had to know this was coming. As soon as they tried to slip free, a countdown started to the moment we would return. We are merciful, so we'll give them an ultimatum. Slip back under Germania's sum once and for all, and all transgressions will be forgiven. The price for resisting need not be stated. What about the Dutch reintegrated Reich will be crushed by the mighty hand of the Wehrmacht? We have to. There are some among us who believe that our future projects are folly, that they'll lead to disaster and ultimately ruin, but do I say, did you ever see my Walter PPK? Lack of main door. Oh. I kind of like that one. The GRWI. The concept of a unified body of scientific innovation research has long been sought by the Reich's technocrats. Finally, however, it seemed that the fear of Goring is he did their words. The GRWI, the Gross Germanische Reich Council on Scientific Innovation, serves this purpose. Though, through its establishment, we shall successfully centralize all of Germany's most talented minds so that they may work on the projects that Goring, and therefore the Reich, desires and requires most. You know what? We have that other army. You might as well use them for something. Should be able to just break through. Hey, we'll see. That's getting slightly worse. The Dutch refuse. What? I don't understand either, mind Fiera. Goren looked on from one thoughts racing through his head, and most of them revolving around one thing. What the heck did the Dutch think that they were doing? He just couldn't understand it. You're seriously refused. My, yes, my fear. They made it quite clear. What the heck do they think they're going to do with us? Kick us with their clogs? And this is ridiculous. I've seen some poor decisions in my time, Axman, and I think this one might just take the cake. Um, well, what are your orders, my fear? Well, I didn't think I, we need to, but green light the invasion plan. We'll start as soon as possible. The minister nodded and left the room quickly, leaving Goring alone with the vein popping out of his temple. What a waste of lives. Their own Germanic brothers, loyal subjects of the Reich, now turning their arms against their homeland in a futile, worthless attempt at honor. A total waste. In a fire speech today at Heidelberg University, the Führer announced a new approach towards the Reich's factionalistic research and development programs. We've already proven the justness and the certainty of our cause. None will ever again think of moving against the Reich of Führer. Goring declared, we have rooted out all the traitors wherever they may have hidden, and now all they do concern us are the Mongol states of the Americans and the Japanese. But we lack the tools and weapons to oppose them, we have allowed ourselves to fall behind in the technological arms race. We became complacent and decadent. We were the first of the bomb, we were the first of the moon, now we've disquandered that advantage. We resume our rifle place as the masters of all technology, not just in Europe, but the entire world. Never again will Germany lag behind the rest of the world. Disappointing. It's like another day, too, so move these guys out of the way. Um, GWRI, and we're going to read through these two. Uh, little Stalaka. Franz Walter Stalaka died in the wool conservatives, come out on top in the struggle for control of Oslo, now that the Reich prospers whole again. Goring has turned his gaze east and found a much less complicated problem to do with than he expected. Stalaka is an avowed Bomanite, but his loyalty is in National Socialism rather than the man himself, although he was clearly to admire the bald bastard. Still, he might be amenable to working with Goring despite their political differences. Indeed, secretly, Goring is relieved to be dealing with a conservative rather than a militarist, as the latter would undoubtedly have been in the field marshal's show in his pocket. However, the military is itching for a fight, and Stalaka looks enough like a traitor in their eyes that they will not hesitate to take Austin by force if they're so ordered. Fall Augustus. In the grim aftermath of a great civil war, we have been forced to face inadequacies that the previous administration could not have accounted for. The general government, supposedly our most successful vassal, is a rotten dumpster fire of epic proportions. Biting the hand that feeds him, the bastard Poles declared independence. Fear Goring will not let this stand, of course. We must protect our own inside the region, even if it means crushing our once loyal protectorate in Operation Mokta. 
Yelmut Johannes Ludwig von Motte was one of the Germany's greatest generals. Under his command, Prussian soldiers marched through Denmark, Austria, and France, trampling under each under their heel and forming the Second German Reich in the process. The Wall of Holstein in 1864 extended Germany onto the Danish peninsula and Hitler's Reich put the rest under supervision. Now we must finish a job. Last time it only took six hours, so this time should be a squeeze. Why do you want to waste lives? That is my question. What an absolute waste. We have only had a week of fuel. But that's literally all we needed. Probably. Sad. Pathetic. Ooh. Den Haag. Conquest of the Netherlands. After a short fight, the Netherlands once again falls under control. The Dutch, despite their best efforts, and certainly fought to the best of their capabilities, are again our subjects, of course. To be fully Germanized, eventually reintegrated into the Reich. Temporarily, the Reichskommissar Niederlande will be restored in order to preside over the final stages in the integration process. Once their task is, of course, complete, the Netherlands will finally join the Reich, not as subjects, but as yet another Germanic brother, ascending into Aryan superiority. Until then, the focus of the Reichskommissar Niederlande will be to provide as a navally inclined Reichskommissariat a base of operations for our Kriegsmarine, for future operations. We can only hope that this time they stop resisting what's good for them. Our fellow Germanics will join the Reich. Welcome back. Von Kiemensegg. King Verzoiling. An economy for Germany. You bet it is. Apathetic people, of course, typical. Oh, we could request forces. Stabilizing the regime, huh? Stratocratic Nazism, huh? Oh, well, we did that one. I got a little more stability. I love it. Ah, return of the NS. NAP. The National Socialistische Niederländische Arbeitspartei were viewed by many in the Netherlands as well bootlickers. It's because of this they were not chosen as a preferred intermediaries for controlling the country in the first place. The NSB, or National Socialist Movement in the Netherlands, were instead the only legal party outside of our own. Times change, however, and the NSB has proven untrustworthy. It turns out nationalist movements like, stay, like staying their own nation. Who knew? The NSNAP will serve as, at least for now. It's important that they get at least feel some feel some kind of freedom, even as their tight, a grip tightens around them. Purify the blood. Ooh. The Dutch are so close to German hurts. Only the Scandinavians have more rarefied Aryan blood still. They have stubbornly resisted our efforts at further integration. No longer. It's time for further purification or removal of dissident elements of any nationalism other than our own. Any team of blood from the former empire in Asia or anyone who thought they could rest easy under a lighter hand will be taken care of. Um, I do want to integrate them. It does not exist. Uh, I might go back and do it. We can loot them. There's a chance we'll never be able to do that. So we do this. They lose their people. And we they do that too. GWRI. That's fine. We gotta get all these other ones done anyways. You might as well go close to Slovakia. The Stalika issue. You haven't met Stalika, have you? The question is muffled with Erk, goring secretary, rummaging through a filing cabinet for the celebratory brandy. The man's that died in the world national socials. Loyal as they come. Goring didn't respond. He simply sat ahead and stared ahead with his hands folded, clearly lost in thought and oblivious to the one sided conversation taking place. I'm sure you won't get along with him, Erk continued, but that wouldn't matter. If you told him to jump off a cliff, he'd do it solely out of respect for your office. After a minute more of awkward silence, Erk returned to Goring's desk, grinning and holding up a 25 year old brandy that the Fuhrer had pocketed during a visit to Paris in 1940. Goring didn't even seem to notice, continuing to stare past his secretary, even as bright-eyed young clerk poured out a glass for his boss. My fear, he asked, noticing Gors Goring's blank expression. Mm, oh yeah, thank you, Eric. Well, Goring muttered, mut closing his warm fingers around the cool, hard glass. No, no, I haven't met with uh, Stalaker. I was an SS man during the war, so I never had the pleasure. A twinge of worry shot across his face, and he raised a glass to down his drink in a single go, savoring the memories of less complicated times that it brought up. Minutes passed, during which Eric could only stand in place, awkwardly fiddling with the bottle's cap. Give me another boy, finally granted. The field marshal's coming to dispense some advice soon. Let's make sure we're properly fortified for it, huh? Uh, unfortunately, there's no ignoring Shorn's advice. The quick courage secures the peaceful approach to Austin. I'm going to do that approach. 
Operation Ostwind. The winner in Austin is Franz Walter Stalker, a man capable of all counts, but unfortunately not a military like Dreschler. Indeed, the Wehrmacht is positively frothing to strike at its former colony, demanding blood for the defeat of their man. However, it's not as they who rule in the Reich as long as Goring is alive. Whether to work with or destroy Stalker, the choice is of yours alone. Eastern Blitz. Austin is the heart of a colonial empire and has remained in the hostile control for long enough. The military is prepared as best they can and is raring to cut their teeth on whatever opponents they can find, German or not. Nothing Austin can muster is enough to save them from the combined might of the uh, Reich's armed forces or the wrath of its betrayed Fuhrer. The disloyal men of the East will be little more than a speed bump for forces as they set forth to reclaim the Reich's rightful lands. Go to war with them, increase loyalty. Loyalty? Cool. Um, where can we see their loyalty? Is it still here? Approval's absolute. Absolutely loyal. Power is high and influence is low. So at least we can see that. Founding the GRWI. The banquet hall was packed with dignitaries. From all over the Reich, scientists from Frankfurt, engineers from Danzig, physicists from Germania, and many others. The food was good and the conversation was riveting, but all eyes were focused on the stage and the podium that stood upon it. After all, the man speaking tonight, the Fuhrer himself, was the main attraction, so when the Fuhrer, clad in his finest uniform, stepped up to the podium, he did so to thunderous applause. He began, my fellow Germans. It's an honor and pleasure to see so many of you here today. I look around this room and I see the best and brightest of Germany, those who both advance our Reich's technology, both military and civilian, while staying true to our ideals, however, for many years. Our progress on the scientific front has slowed. The Reich's Forschungsrat, which I know all of you love, a ripple of laughter rolls through the audience, has been bogged down for years under an endless weight of political obstructionism, corruption, and the creeping tide of unchecked Judeo-Bolshevik influence. But no more. The age of progress has returned to German science. With this new centralized ministry that we've created to replace the bloated corpse of the Reich Forschungsrat, led by the watchful gaze of my esteemed colleague and good friend Werner Osenberg. Osenberg walked on stage to a lot of applause. He waved to the crowds and took the spot next to the Fuhrer, whose smile spread across his face. Germany shall once again be at the forefront of technology. Drink water tonight, friends, for today we celebrate the founding of the GRWI. The room shook with cheers and applause as Osenberg and Goring shook hands, making sure to smile for the cameras. A brilliant step forward. That didn't help with growth, but whatever. The science expenditures, more research speed. Oh, yeah, heck yeah. And Ostwind, uh, what is this one? Fruling, ah, uh, Falagostus. And also, I'm going to try this off screen too. It does not exist. I'm trying to loot them, and then we'll do that too. But during the height of the Civil War, the degenerate Poles erupted with unprovoked violence against the GNC, or GGM. We must reclaim our dominion over them lest we appear weak to the rest of the world. Eastern tank buildup. Much like the heroes of old, our invasion of Poland will be tipped by the indomitable Panzer Corps. Little more than ragtag militias, the Poles will be totally and utterly annihilated by our superior armed forces and highly trained crews. Nothing stands in our way. Interesting. Uh, Eastern air buildup. Although our mighty arms are undoubtedly the finest on the face of the fierce green earth, we have since learned our lessons from the wars of the old. Air support is key, and our Luftwaffe excels in battlefield support. Constructing additional airships along the Polish border allows us to use our forces to maximum effort, and remind veterans of the years past when they feared the sound of dive bombers, which is not really worth it. Destroy Poland. I'll just destroy them. We need more manpower, and we'll go to war with them. Fate of the Poles. Oh. Subjugated, subju uh, subjugated once more into the boot of our unconquerable will, the Poles will once again learn that fut resistance is futile. The grim acceptance we had hoped has not yet set in among the population, and we will remind them of their place at the bottom of the pyramid. The ones who resist will make excellent examples. Ooh, cool. Um, so we crushed the Dutch. There's nothing else we can really do here. Oh, let's see what happens here first. Operation Melkta. More political power. More spending. Agricultural improvement. More recruitable population. Militar Wissenschaft. Infantry. Helicopter doctrine. The sun gun. Power plants. Public concern will rise. Well, I think I'm going to go with this drum heads across Germany. The Civil War has been won. Our economy has been saved by a great leader, and now we look into the world and prepare for the greatest conquest in history. Our great conquest will put those of Napoleon, Hitler, and Alexander the Great to shame. The Nazi banner will fly and wave in the heat of Iberia, the winds of Rome, and the rain of Washington, D.C. And it'll flutter as the cherry blossoms in Tokyo. The people must know of our coming glory, and despite the hardships of the Civil War, the civilians must know of the greatness upon uh, the horizon. We'll realize the goals of Hitler and the greatness will be projected from the rising sun of the east and the setting sun in the west. Return to the S-Nap. Or N-S-Nap. Or the Netherlands. Once again, in the Reich's sphere of influence, so too came the return of the SNAP, the Dutch wing of that Nazi party, once alone in power in Holland. 
the S NS snap or N snap. Uh, through incompetence and general failings, they lost control of their nation, forced to retreat into Germany. Now the Germans behind them, the S NS and AP were assumed control. Uh, offices. As one tell by the NS and IP, officials were already stocked with staunch hardliners. Government policy was replaced with the old ways, and their focus on the Dutch government once again shifted back to their original task. Quick. Seamless integration with the GGR. Though Germanization progress was certainly dealt a setback in the last years, the new government is wasting no time in recovering their progress and marching onwards. With luck, we may even see the Netherlands integrated as part of Germany proper within the next few years. Europe gets closer to its salvation. Now look at this. Once more, our German troops march through the fields of the Netherlands, and once more the swastika flies over Amsterdam. The West Mark has been restored to the Reich and is already being divvied up to the Reich's scowl for loyal party members to squabble over. A victory parade has been organized and medals drawn up for the veterans of all Sischelschnitt, not to mention for illustrious fear. Our conquests proceed apace. They shall finally join our Germanic brothers in the Greater German Reich, forming five new Reich Scala, earning its cores in the formerly Dutch lands. Oh, well, that's cool. We just straight up annex them. Even though I did want to, like, destroy them. The chaos of civil war forced little Denmark to break away from the Reich. Naturally, it's only a temporary development, whether the danger realize it or not. Uh, I read that one earlier before, so. I kind of want to do this. Yeah, we can do it anyways. We get more growth, which is a want. I don't care about the debt so much. I wonder if we can do that too. But we will see. Dimming the black sun. Good morning, citizens of the Reich. This is Reichsende Germania, and both with the blessing and permission from Fjord Hermann Goring, we've been allowed to broadcast the results of the trials against the black stain known as the Schutzstaffel that has been plaguing Germany. With the united effort of the Wehrmacht, Ordnungspolizei, and all of the Reich's legal institutions, vast structures containing thousands of supporters of Heinrich Himmler, Reinhard Heydrich, and other associated high rank SS members. One Schaffier, Swash Alexander, has admitted to taking extensive funding from the Organization of Free Nations funneled through the territory of the Bahamas. Others report submit to having ties to the radical Judeo Bolshevik organization known as Nakam, as well as contact with Japanese agents located in Brittany. In light of these discoveries, Judge Ernst Lautz proclaimed in his final statement One death is not enough for these men. For their treason and destruction against the Reich, they should die 1,000 times, with 15,000 deaths senses thus declared and carried out via hanging. The Reich has been made a safer place for all of us by the Fuhrer himself, and his generosity has also declared that all former Schutzstaffel positions shall be converted for service to the Reich. It is at the hope that they eventually, all traces of the Schutzstaffel will henceforth be obliterated, once and for all, separating National Socialism from the plans of the rogue state known as Burgundy, and for the news, one Otto Gunsch, and I looked and behold, a pale horse, as was stripping them of their honor. The SS love to parade their little medals of crap on their chest so that people will believe them to be heroes, however. The truth is that they are all cowards mopping the floor for the lunatic and burgundy. The SS does not deserve these medals as they have never shown any shred of honor, bravery, or even any strength of any kind. The SS does not deserve any of these medals and these medals will be better served being melted down into bullets or spoons for respectable veterans to eat from. All current and former members of the SS not sufficiently loyal will be stripped of all military honors for the betrayal. Oh, get Fuhrer Directive 343, 3, 3, and get 10% more worse for it. We'll loot the castles. There was a virus that was infecting Germany since the rise of Adolf Hitler, that being the thuggish SS led by their insane overlord, Heinrich Himmler. The time will come when we put an end to this mad experiment in Burgundy, but that requires long months and years of planning before we can do that safely. For now, though, any vestiges of the SS in Germany will be firmly and justly wiped out. We'll start by tearing down the bizarre castles that are plastered all across Germany. We might expect there to be some traps or SS officers hiding here and there, but we'll go in and come out with as many goods that the SS have been hoarding in their palaces. The affluent wealth of the SS will be put to better use in the hands of the state, of course. Why wouldn't it be? And uh, we'll show you what, what what I'm cooking up here real quick. Um, 1970, honestly. So, basically this is what we're doing. We directly annex them. Um, a couple days, whatever. Uh, we're starting to do Mokta, Denmark, Slovakia, all this fun stuff here. So, we're going to march on Bratislava. In the meantime, oh, did it, ooh, oh, well, I guess I reloaded the game. It didn't make these cores. It was supposed to make these things cores. What the heck? This might be a little bugged. These should be cores. I might do something here to make sure that these are actually cores in the end because it said that we would, when we integrate them, we would get uh, more than what we have here. So I might go back and replay this episode a little bit just in case. We should get all the generals. We should get all the cores here. Um, so we'll see. But we'll get there when we get there as we lose the castles. Ah, so luck. Ah, oh, the Slovenes. Slovenians. You know, what a mistake. The new Reichskommissariat. Look at that. 
Fierce Foch was not too close to him and Goring, nor was he high enough rank to warrant much of the Fierce's attention, so when he was caught in Goring's office, he assumed that he had done something wrong. The steps into the Fierce's office were torture, as were the pleasantries before the meeting began. Slowly, however, the sense of dread was replaced with confusion as him and Goring continued to dance around the point. Asking questions about his combat record, his experience in education, it began to dawn on Foch that his, this may not be a punishment, but a job interview. Well, Foch, I'm, I'm sure you're wondering why I called you in here, Goring said, taking a drink from his glass. Forst silently nodded. You know of our recent operation in Slovakia, yes? It's clear to me that the Slovaks are too untrustworthy to entrust with running their own country, after all. That's what we did for years, and they split from us the first chance they got. I'm planning on setting up a new Reichskommissariat there, and you seem like a good man for the job. Forst sat silently. That's not what he was expected. Finally, he caught uh, an <clears throat> Of course, my Fuhrer. Goring smiled, of course. He'll be leaving for Bratislava tomorrow. Good luck. Yeah, Forst. He's going to need it. Ah, Forst. Where is he at? Oh, look at this guy. Fuhrer's Forst. If you'd like to read about him, please go ahead. And we're stabilizing the regime, as, sh as we should. Eastern Blitz over the la last time. Augustus, Mokta. Um, are we still training our ships? Let's keep training our ships for now. Denmark is nice and all, but Augustus needs to happen now. The bowls of Perfidious bowls. What a bunch of crazies. I mean, that's, that's basically how I can put it. Like, like, bro. Why would you go behind our backs? We're on trade. Ooh. So, surplus is still good. That's not good. Um, we are we have no rubber. We need rubber. We need fuel. I don't want to import any more fuel. So we're actually going to instead start producing more fuel ourselves. Fuel Director 353, though. One. In light of the continuous treason against Reich, all non-loyal personnel, the Algamon SS, Waffen SS, RSHA, SS Sonderkommando, SS Medical Corps, Annenerba, SS Frauenkorps, Auxiliary SS, as well as the SS Foreign Legion, shall be stripped of their military and financial honors. I just don't check everything around here, too. And when some comments go through, too. Two. Hereafter, non loyal are defined those who refuse to join the rightful successor to Adolf Hitler in the battle against the treasonous force, thus prolonging the suffering of the German, German people in a brother war. Three. All non loyal former personnel of the above organizations, both alive and deceased, shall likewise be stripped of all honors in four. Exceptions to the above can only be made of the Fuhrer's discretion. Signed, Fuhrer the German Reich, Hermann Wilhelm Goring. No loyalty means no honor. And the German triumph. There was something incredible about the triumphs of the old Roman era that truly speaks to the German nation. The shows of one's strength and devotion to the fatherland were things which united the entire nation in one giant parade towards valor and nationalism. With the ashes of the Civil War fading, we should give one of our most loyal and faithful generals a triumph of his very own. That man, of course, is Ferdinand Schorner. A uh, loyal soldier, an honorable and trustworthy man since the times of World War II, he truly deserves the triumphs as those Julius Caesar had, and he also has been pushing for this for a long time, as he puts it. We should wrap the entirety of Germany into a cult, the cult of valor. Oh, look at this. Um, Bastion on the Sea. Get more organization and armor, or expand task force capabilities. Screen attack. Nah, we're going to go this one. Or Bastion on the Sea, definitely. Alright, well, air bases, new tank divisions. Well, that's nice. No, we, can, we can make what we want. Of course, this is free, so do we get free manpower? Actually, getting free manpower to this would be nice, but I still want to keep some political power here, too. And we get manpower here, so. Um, I mean, that wouldn't be bad for 10 days. You get a new tank division. Do, I, do we want a new tank division? I mean, tank divisions right now are not bad. I do want that free manpower, though. You know what? I'm going to do it for the free manpower. We could probably use the armor as well. As right, we're still trying to integrate the Netherlands. Okay, so there, there's that. So we'll see what happens. Maybe I won't have to use Cons commands, I hope. And after that, review the fleet. Oh, God. Grenadiers. Greece debt by 2 billion. That Grenadiers, not bad. Sort of the army's grandeur. Greatly increases maximum investment funding. Box Grenadiers. Conscription factor will increase. That's actually really good. Um, pride of the Reich. Lip off of the pride and joy of the German Reich can be trusted with more than any of the branches due to the history of Goring. Elite infantry. Ooh. Detriment of our air superiority. Give our enemies ground forces will increase by 10%. Ooh, more special forces. Ace generation factor. I mean, it just depends what we want here, really. Strike lightning, air superiority factor. Strategic defense. I like more political power, I like that. Decrease loyalty, but also decrease the power. New nuclear silos, which I don't want to do because it costs us extra money that we don't really have. It's not bad to duck and cover for the Reich's defenses. Safeguard the Volk. Weekly war support, oh, for a couple, like a year and a half, or a year and a quarter, or whatever. Um, I kind of want to still purge academia, though. And see what we can do here. Uh, German academia support for and relationship with Fuhrer Goring has been uh, contentious, to say the least. The Agheads were the first to turn their heads in disdain from a struggle in the Burger Creek, and some retain the hatred even as they walk back to our offices. Indeed, by allowing certain individuals to remain a part of the GRWI, we may unintentionally stifle scientific development in the Reich as subversive intellectuals seek to slow progress. To prevent this, 
We'll get rid of the more troublesome elements of the scientific academia, and those who are not in accord with Goring's vision, of course. The castles burn. Grosinci, uh, Vogelzang, Sondolfin, the Byler, bomber pilot, Leopold, muttered under his breath, looking over a map with several targets across Germany marked. The rest of his skeleton crew worked in the background, getting ready to pilot the plane for the fourth time this weekend, their target being Odensburg, Marienburg. Leopold simply sighed as he out a finger from the marked building to marked building. As ruthless as they were, it extremely what was left of the Schutzstaffel of legacy. Leopold had no sympathy for them. Odensburg, Marienburg, at this point, was nothing but cinders and rubble, and yet still him and his crew were asked to bomb it a fourth time, or fifth time even. Uh, an amused smile came over him as he backed away from the map and turned around, mental images forming in his head of how he had flown over Marienburg the first time, and one of his comrades informed him that there were piles of loot to be found it, in it. Gold, jewels, relics, art, everything stolen from Germany itself to whatever power or minority found itself at the hands of the SS, and everything carted back to these places now being carted out to be repurposed back to the German people. And with some not-so-subtle rumors flowing around that most of it would go to a certain pompous fear, with a uh, grin. Leopold stretched out his arms above his head and then snapped his fingers, cracking the air open with a loud whistle and catching the rest of his crew's attention. Carrying some boxes, some polishing up the plans, with an elated tone befitting a bomber serving the right crowd, he spoke. Let's start another firestorm in Marienburg and lead the fifth round of the rats. Oh, more money. So, three tank divisions. Preussisch uh, Panzer divisions. Fourteen combo width. It's not bad. <laughs> wow, recon companies. It's not bad, but we're here for the manpower, really. So, die now and amuse us. We get a few more fighters. It's not bad, but we have any more casts. There you go. Have fun. Boom, boom. You can just go around them. Pretty much. Nice. It's a beautiful thing. Fall. Fate of the Poles. The Germanian Triumph. And let's get down to business. Uh, the reclamation, or the completion of all former administrative tasks required to establish a GRWI, Gross Germanisches Reich Council on Scientific Innovation. It's time we, as the saying goes, get down to business, thus with the support of Fjord Goring himself. Let the process of research and development commence, as our funding and top quality manpower shall produce the finest military science that history has ever seen. German science, as they say, is the best in the world and we shall lead it to glory. Dust it us. Just a few years of the 20th century has been more than enough for much of the world, so it's hard to imagine what it looked like millions of years ago. As dancers began to rule the Earth over 135 million years ago, the supercontinent of Gondwana broke apart as an enormous eastern section split and drifted northwards. A geologically short 57 million years later, as the king of the Tarrant Lizards and the three-horned Triceratops battle for the Earth, the section split again. The larger section would later crash into the continent of Asia, creating some of the highest mountains on Earth, and forming a peninsula with an equally sizable impact on the human race. That's really the piece. It's sad and blissful environmental solitude, but then came man. A plane's burn. The animals scattered in the jungles was brought low as the iron technological might of man was brought to on itself in the islands. Some felt the islands uh, uh, was destroyed beyond all usefulness with the husks of trees and ruined farms abounding, but they forgot what force ruled this island long before the so-called great and superpowers. It would be useless to mention that particular species of animal that poked around the wreckage of what mankind had wrought. Madagascar is home to thousands of species that are as unique to it as any other one of them. Hundreds of bird species flew over the battlefields and re in the ash. The chameleons climbed through the vehicles, imitating the ash and steel surroundings, a cat-like fossa. Searched for prey in the trenches and foxholes, and hanging off the guns and cannons were the lemurs, the primates who had long mastered these islands. Soon the floor would follow the prey to fauna. The grassland in the central highlands, rainforests in the east, and deciduous forests in the west would reclaim their battered homelands. Everywhere would spell out the flowering plants, most notably the vast variety of orchids, and eventually the land would grow and grow the baobab and traveler's palm the island was so known for. The soldiers would fade away, the wreckage rust into the dirt, but the island would go on. Soon this environmental catastrophe would be put away for good, and this unique environment of Madagascar would continue as it always had. Man is but a blink in nature's eye, or face, or ability. People are dying here. But there are they really people? If we don't consider them people. That is the real question. Oh, look at this. Uh, we could charge more. To be paying off that debt. Purge Academia. Get the Hulks. Ooh, we should be good jump for them. This miscellaneous cost. Mass conversion to aircraft carriers. Recycle the steel, because we're going to need this eventually. Revive Plan Z. Atlantic Veterans. No such thing as obsolete. I kind of like that one more, yeah. Um, just because I don't want more cost. Miscellaneous costs. 
I mean, don't get me wrong, that's nice for aircraft carriers, but go do it anyways. Mm, national debt will increase. Armor will go up. Ooh, with professional armor with esprit de corps. Power of the Metros will increase. More debt, but this is going to help out everybody. More attack, defense, agility, attack, defense. Yeah. Grenadiers. There's a sentiment among many German generals that we need some behemoths of an army, but it should be realized that this is just not logistically feasible. The German military should be at what it always has been and what it always should have been, an elite daily force of new, few honorable, well-equipped divisions ready to set out and die for the nation. If we bloat our army with borderline undesirables, then we will end up with a disaster in our hands. It's become clear that a Prussian army cannot be corrupted by weakness, and so only the fittest should be allowed to fight for the val valor of the fatherland. The triumph of the field marshal. The morning in Germania was a cacophony of noises, not only serving as one of uh, the biggest capitals of the world on 1 o'clock on 29th of May, 1966. The magnificent city shook under the weight of the Wehrmacht, a parade unmatched by the sides or by the rest of the world. Thousands of soldiers, razor sharp and disciplined, and armed with select rifles that remained standing after the fires of the Civil War are calm. Tanks, trucks, armored personnel carriers, and other types of vehicles roll through the wide and narrow streets alike, treads and wheels, and turning of engines, making it clear to all the superiority of Fuhrer Himmigoring and the most valuable Field Marshal Ferdinand Schorner. Finding himself comfortable sitting upon one of the most modern tanks in position of the hair, Shona swept his glasses worn eyes over the masses that gathered and watched, and the pride tinged through his fingertips as he reached for the electric megaphone near him. With a satisfying click, he took a deep breath and brought it to his mouth, and the voice of one of the Reich's most powerful men came out at the end as he thrust a fist into the air. Soldiers, we are whole once more. The traitors within and without are extinguished. The Reich in all its glory has returned, never to falter again. Our enemies sought to destroy us, but they've only made us stronger. The time has come to strike back, to rise from the ashes of the Civil War. It's kind. The time has come to show all those who oppose us what the Wehrmacht is capable of, as all the world will see our might and tremble in perpetuity. The sound of boots never stop. One of the comments from history says, In the next Tino update, can you do the UK as Rab Butler and empower the pragmatists of the BPP every chance you get in the start of the UK's focus tree? I picked the decisions that ensure Harold Wilson as a successor. I can, but I don't. I really don't know what the next update for Old World, Old World Blues, um, for Tino is. So yeah, if we get there, yeah, sure, why not? Fate of the Poles. Subjugated once more under the boot of our unconquerable will, the Poles once more learn that resistance is futile. The grim acceptance we had hoped for has not yet set among the population. We'll remind them of their place at the bottom of the pyramid. The ones who resist will make excellent examples. Ooh, stability and war support. I think that's worth it. Mm. I guess go here. Why don't you guys have focus on the middle? Because Denmark is next. Burning cloth, Joseph Resch, sending a glove of vomit onto the cold pavement. His fingers, unlike the rest of him, remained strong, gripping at his father's brass sword as the brute tried to pry it away. He could hear Anna somewhere nearby, weeping loudly, but did not have the strength to open his eyes and look for her. A sharp pain struck Joseph. Another kick aimed at his ribs. They had burned his, their flag, invaded their nation, and taken their pride. Could the Germans not leave him alone this one reminder of his father and the people for whom he had fought? A boot smashed into his nose and found himself kicked in blood. The man yelled something in German, but Joseph's ears were pounding too hard to hear it. And yet Joseph did not let go. <coughs> perhaps like his father. Before him, he was truly willing to fight for the Polish people. Perhaps he was simply tired of allowing these men to push him around, and perhaps he was simply too beaten and tired to open his fingers, and even if it may yet save his life, yet he could not last forever. It could not. And he felt the cloth rip, Joseph knew his class was lost. That last memento that he had so fought so hard for was torn away. The fire crackled and the Germans began to laugh. He could picture his father's red and white brass among the shriveled ashen flags, burning amongst those other symbols of resistance. And yet, lying prone to them, broken on the ground, splattered with blood and mud in his own vomit, Joseph felt more a pull than ever. You cannot burn their spirit. Ah, very good. Maybe we some water here, too. Mokta. Oh, we just go straight to war with them. The fall of Warsaw. Wojciech Omnia lay beneath the rubble, dreaming of oblivion. He drifted uh, across a reality where it all ended, where his brethren would never fear to speak Polish, where Warsaw would re uh, reside beneath the peaceful horizon, never starless, and the shrouded horrors of the past long forgotten. A world wrought from his own sacrifice for, to, for him. To join a doom uprising that would ensure Nazism to be lost in echoes and for all its children to be dis disintegrated into the ashes of destiny and time. He wakened from the call of his son, scarcely a decade old, holding his morbidly wounded arm. The child begged for him to find the strength to lift himself up from the debris, to find and join his wife, who survived the mortar strike. The father struggled to turn his head to see the devastation. He saw his comrades from the underground all around him, their bodies gray and still. From his numbness, he knew he would soon join them to the end. His, he extended his arm and pulled his son close, and told him with his dying breath to walk towards the sunrise until they reached a mythical new homeland, a place where they would never be lost again. The child's gripped in a falter, and the pain of the loss too providential in his hands. The boy prayed for God to deliver them from evil, for a world where they never had to suffer. 
As the son begged for the Lord's mercy, he remembered the vision he saw and decided that nothing could have ever made him uh, give up his only son. Weakly, he murmured his last words, If I were God, Jacob, I'd make the role just so and no different. So I have you. I have you. His voice drifted away from the role with his soul. The child held his cold, motionless hand until the smoke cleared and the toiling of St. Florian's bells rang across the room. Jacob Omniel reached into his father's uniform, unpinned the emblem of the uh, Kotwika from the leather jacket, and placed it in his pocket before he turned around away from the sunset and began to make his way along the long road home. Never lost. Art collecting. Franz examined the painting before him and propped up against the wall. It was like nothing he had ever seen before, though admittedly he had no great mind or talent for art. Florian, come up and help me with this. The splatters of color had a most pleasing pattern. The paint he had used had an unusually deep, rich quality for what the ultimate you would be able to purchase. Perhaps he'd gotten it illegally. <coughs> Florian made his way over, sluggishly, pricking up upon seeing the art. Oh, what a beauty, he remarked. Perhaps Fear himself would enjoy it. We could tell him that we found it in the basement of the museum. Florian has enjoyed making the origin of the piece a bit more exciting. Perhaps we will say it's painted by Casimir the Great himself in his dying days. Franz thought that perhaps they had accredited too much of the bounties to long dead kings already, but merely shrugged as he fixed his hand around the rim. It is, if he does not wish to hang it at Karen Hall, I think my wife would enjoy having Casimir's last works above our fireplace. It would be a great topic of conversation. I wouldn't be so sure if Lauren took his place opposite his partner with a grim. I think the only topic your wife will bring up is that girl in Danzig who's been writing your letters. <laughs> As the two chatted, they picked up the painting and carefully uh, carried it through the hall. Along the way, they made sure to avoid what remained of the artist. Uh, life quenched for vanity's sake. Under the comment was, how does one even get the option to invade Africa and reclaim it? Well, you don't until it falls apart. And then you can start doing something. Because you can see, they're already falling apart. And that's okay with us. Anything here? Nothing we really care about too much. The climate's of war. It's not hot yet, but that's fine with us. Cool. Someone said, I wanted a liberal goring. Well, I don't think we're going to get that. But the GW... GRWI. How do we do this? Uh, the Gross Deutscher Reichsrat for Wissenschaftliche uh, Innovation. Feature of science in the Reich for some, but for the fear of simply another useless organization, set up with the end goal of destroying military's power and influence. Because of the sinister end goal, we have to spend a sum every month equal to the corruption percentage times the yearly budget of the GRWI, but if the organization does not work in a vacuum, it should either the concern of the military or the civilian population reach 100%. Because of several failed projects, we shall be forced to shut down the whole operation. There's no uh, uh, there's a little corruption. No. Decrease military concern. Public concern. Overall concern. Discontinue the Liga. Welcome to the Reich. The people of the Reich, the lands of Warsaw once more and forever shall be German. Goring spoke, of course, uh, before a massive crowd, and cheering so loud that he could barely be heard. He waved his hands sweepingly, as if moving to simmer down the crowds. They fell into the, Im down into line immediately. He could hang out of the fear's next word, if only the politicians and the generals were so easily harangued, Goring thought. The failing of those before us, the cause of these Untermenschen to challenge us, was al to allow them to believe that the land once called Poland still existed. Goring declared, making sure to project strength, this land, now fully Germanized, and remain in the image of the Reich, was subject to the degenerate craving of the Slav and the target of the most fearful attacks, when the German people's eyes turned away from it and towards one another. No more will we call our rifle levens around the land of the Poles. This region of Germany will from now on be referred to as only by its proper name. Goring roared of the masses, who seemed to be eating it up. While the Slavic menace mourns for Poland, the Aryan race will sing of Greater Prussia. The German people who have made Greater Prussia their home know that they are within the, this Reich that, that uh, will last a thousand years. A thundering chorus of hell goring rang out, a sound that could be heard from anywhere in Germania. The Fuhrer smiled, knowing in his heart that, for all the parts one may ascribe it, his reich was great. Preussen's glory. Warsaw was renamed to Grosspreussenbühl, Gross and Nordweichslam Vest changed into Grosspreussenbühl. Beautiful. And there goes them. No corruption. March on Copenhagen. Copenhagen is once again surrendered to the might of the Wehrmacht, naturally it's cause for celebration. Our illustrious sphere has called for a triumph in the style of the Romans, not only for himself and his generals, but in honor of every soldier who set foot in Denmark. This is GDP. Beautiful. Prolonged occupation. Denmark did their best to break free once before. Well, let's say they won't try it again. The Wehrmacht will prove their worth in the swift recapture of the Jutland, and the fear of Goring's Luftwaffe are always tr tr worthy of trust. It's only appropriate that they be relied upon to watch over the newly recaptured Northern March of the Reich. The Danish may not be too happy, but we all have to make sacrifices for the good of our country. The pleasing militarists, how will it take a hit to our national stability? Work towards integration. Um, it's only right that Denmark be incorporated into the Reich proper as soon as possible. They are practically perfect Aryans, separated only by their uh, Viking or heritage. Their position at the mouth of the Baltic makes them vital to its control, and a light hand is only appropriate to keep the Danish happy with the situation. They should be granted their own semi-autonomous Reichsgau. 
As much as the Wehrmacht may be unhappy with removing their latest conquest, work towards integrating Denmark will lead to growth and international stability about displeased militarists. I like this one, but I work towards integration. Is that immediate? These guys aren't cool yet, are they? Um, oh, I'm a military factories too. Working on refineries and whatnot as well. You know, good stuff. I'll hopefully get these guys cored. Uh, is this actually go? Ah, oh, fantastic! Fantastic. That didn't help us that much there, but whatever. Alright. Operation Blitz. Um, I think I read this one earlier. Austin is the heart of a colonial empire and has remained in the hostile control for long enough. The military is prepared as best as they can, is raring to cut their teeth on whatever opponents they can find in Germany or not. Nothing else can muster is enough to save them from the combined might of the Reich's armed forces or the wrath of its betrayed Fuhrer. Uh, the disloyalty of the East will be a little more than a speed bump. For our forces as they sent forth to reclaim the Reich's rightful land. Pretty much. Grenadiers followed up immediately with... Germany's finest. There were many among the military during the Civil War whose acts of strength were not recognized by us at the time, and that is truly a shame. Yes, many Germans did fight valiantly to defeat those who wished to quarrel the Reich, but many did truly extraordinary things. We need to find such ubermenschen and give them the rewards they deserve, like perhaps promotion, so that our army will be led by the greatest men in Germany has to offer. When we succeed, the army will be a true and great, glorious Prussian army that even the great Frederick would tremble over. Nice. Thank you. Go straight for Riga. <laughs> if you can. If you can. That's our engineering, which we should actually focus a little more here on. Yeah. Grenadiers. The training soft tech will go up, recovery will go up. Uh, hurts mobilization speed, which is fine. Hurts training level, personal cost. Uh, military, mil monthly military professionalism. Strength of power is in the hearts of every German man, however. Some inherently have it more than others. Thus, we need to weed out the weak and elevate the strong. Our training will be harsh, it will be grueling, but it will be necessary. Those who cannot deal with this will be tossed aside as they shall be a better fit for the factories, however. Those who will struggle on will be words like those of Sparta, so full of valor and fire that no nation can dare challenge us ever again. Now is the era of strength, and those who do not adapt will be trampled, of course, underfoot. Military Wissenschaft. If it, were, if it wishes to maintain its hegemony for the millennium that was promised to it by Hitler, the Reich must maintain its edge in the tools of the war. Many things have changed since the days of the 40, or 40s when the Arpanzers overran the Poles. The French, the Russians, are now the main battle tank, and the helicopter of the tools of the bloody trade and must be developed quickly alongside conventional firearms if we wish to dominate our enemies. Of course, the branches of the Wehrmacht jealously guard their little secrets, unwilling to let rivals let the military gain an advantage, and thus more funny. The Führer may be the master of the Reich, but even he may be hard-pressed when such stubborn fools are involved. Sure, why not? Beautiful. Improved carrier hull? Hull? Beautiful. It's got armor. You've got plenty of deck size, right? Yeah. 
I love it. Cruiser hold D. Oh god. I'm gonna look at this off screen too. Well, what can we do here? Integrate them? Well, the Axcom Asuraios are a temporary solution to the colonization problem. They are merely interim governments that administer the native populaces before integration. It's a good achievement for all in the Axcom Asuraios administration when the Axcom Asuraios ceases to exist. There's no doubt that Austin has finally reached a point where they can, we can destroy the Axcom Asuraios and integrate it as core German territory once and for all. We'll split it up into new Axcom and the remnants of the Slavs and Austin will be swept eastwards out into Muscovy and beyond will be obstruct the dream of a German Empire or German Europa no more. Austin is German now and forevermore. Focus on integrating them, but do this, we'll be unable to further loot the former Axcom Asuraios. Loot Austin. 25% chance we'll ever be able to do that. We could. Honestly. I just want to straight up integrate them. Easy decisions. Easy easy decisions. But I think I'll end it there. We've done very, very well for ourselves. And... Ooh, this is still not cores wise. Oh, these are these are cores. Thank God. The Dutch are integrated. The Danish are integrated. Some places here will eventually be integrated, but I thoroughly enjoyed this episode. I love taking out other people. But if you enjoyed this episode, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see what we can do with good old Hermann Goldring. Thanks for watching. Have a tremendous fat man rest of your day.